Hello, today we're continuing chapter 6. So we've covered section 6.1 and 6.2, um, which talks about the normal distribution, uh, but using all the standard normal distribution. Now I want to talk about the normal distribution, um, applications of it using any distribution, so not necessarily just the standard normal. Um, so I have this uh, worksheet for you guys, and I'll go through and do the problems on this worksheet, and hopefully that'll kind of show you everything that we need to learn um, about applications of the normal distribution. Okay, for this to do these problems you're going to need your calculator and you will also need the table in the back of the book. At the very beginning I'll show you how to use the table. So I have a copy of it here and in the back of the book there's um, two pages. It's table A2 and it's positive and negative z-scores. Okay, so what this table shows you is Given the z-score, what is the area to the left of the uh, z-score? Okay, so the, it's, it shows you the area below that z-score on a standard normal distribution. All right. So first question is, uh, what percent of wizards and witches? Oops. All right. What percent of wizards and witches? Um, have wands shorter than Harry Potter's wand whose wand is 11 inches and we know that wands are normally distributed with a mean of 10.7 and a standard deviation of 1.6 okay so first thing I'm going to do is whoops alright first thing I'm going to do is um, talk about method 1 now method 1 uses the z-score in the tables so first thing you want to do is calculate the z-score. So 11 minus 10.7 divided by 1.6 gives us 0.1875. Okay. Now look on the table and try to find the z-score of 0.1875. Okay. So if I have the table here, these are negative, positive, point one eight seven five. Now you can see here this only goes up to two decimals, point one eight and point one nine. Okay. Let me write down both of these areas. So when z equals point one eight, the area is uh, 57.14 percent. I'll just write it as that. And when the z-score is 0.19, the area is 0.5753. So I've just gone on the table and uh, looked at the z-scores corresponding to 0.18 and 0.19. Now I want to look at 0.1875, right? So I need to be 75% more than this area. So f so think like this. I have a bar, right? What is the length of this bar? Well, that I'm going to subtract 0 0.5753 minus 0 0.5714. Okay, and so that gives me the that gives me the length of this bar. But I will only want 75%. That's where this number is coming from. I only want 75% of this bar. So let me multiply this by 0.75. And when you do that, you get at 0.002925. Okay? So the length of this space of 75% of this bar is 0 0.002925. And I want to add that to the lower area. And I get 0.5743. Okay? So think about it like this. For a z score of 0.18, the area is 0.5714. But I want 0.1875. So I have to go that 75. I have to go that 0.0075 more. 
well how much is that point zero zero seven five worth in area it's worth this much so I add that to my point five seven one four to get fifty seven forty three percent so that's method one and the only reason we do all these calculations is because the table does not give us precise enough uh, scores it only gives us scores for um, for two decimal places in the z scores method two which I think you'll like is using the norm CDF function again lower limit zero upper limit eleven inches mean now my mean is ten point seven and my standard deviation is one point six if you plug that into the calculator so second vars norm CDF and I want to look at how many wands are between 0 and 11 inches given a mean of 10.7 and a standard deviation of 1.6 enter and I also get 0.5743 So that's the way to do these problems. Um, note, if you have the z-scores, then you can also do something like, and you don't want to use the table, then you can do norm CDF from point, um, the z-score is 0.1875, so I'm looking at from 0, comma, 0.1875, comma, the mean and standard deviation for the z-scores also gives me this. But if you're going to go through all that effort, why not just use the norm CDF function without having to calculate the z-scores? Let's do another example. So I want to know the probability of having a wand between 9 and 12 inches. Okay. For method 1, again, I calculate the z-scores for both. 9 minus 10.7 divided by 1.6 gives me a z-score of negative 0.0625. Method 2, I mean, uh, the z-score for the second one is 12 minus 10.7 divided by 1.6 gives me 0.8125. And again, I'm going to have to look up the z-score for this. So let me draw you a little picture. So I want between 9 and 12, right? So if I find the area, whoops, what happened? I zoomed in too much. I touched something. Hold on, let me go back to the page width. So if I um, look at the area below 12, the area below 12 minus the area below 9, gives me the area in the middle. So if I take the z-score of 12 and the z-score of 9 and get the areas and subtract the areas, do not subtract the z-scores, do not make that mistake. You want to find the areas first and then subtract the areas and that will give you the area in the middle. Okay. Now it's pretty tedious to find the areas using the table because you got to go negative point, I mean if you want to be precise you got to look at negative point, uh, negative 1.0625. Well, there is no negative 1.0625, so I'm going to have to look between negative 1.06 and negative 1.07. That's these two numbers, whoops, right here. And then do 25% more and all that business. So using the tables takes a little bit of time. Um, if you have the z-scores, you can use the norm CDF function going from negative 1.0625 to 0.8125. What's the mean of a z-score or of a normal distribution? Zero, standard deviation is one. Or you could just use, from the beginning, just use norm CDF going from 9 to 12. 
with a mean of 10.7 and a standard deviation of 1.6. Once you do that, you get 64.77%. Okay, so as you can see, method two is a lot easier, it's faster, right? The purpose of this course is for you to understand the concepts, not necessarily be able to do complicated calculations, okay? Or tedious calculations at that. So, given a problem, if you're going to use the norm CDF function, let me write it for you up here, then you want to do, again, norm CDF to the lower limit, comma, the upper limit, comma, the mean, and the standard deviation. Okay. Sometimes you have to use like zero for the lower limit, and sometimes you have to uh, use a really big number for the upper limit. Now here, I'm giving you the area, and I want you to find the length. So what lengths are in the top 25%? Top 25%, remember we always need the area to the left. That means 75% is to the left. So I want to use this area. You always want to use the area below or the area to the left. So top 25% means bottom 75%. Now method one, using the table, you got to find 75% in the table in the center of the table. So let me go down and look in the center. Where is 0.75? Roughly here. It's between these two numbers, isn't it? So it's between 0.67 and 0.68. So I can say it's 0.675. So um, if the area is 75%, that corresponds to a z-score of 0.675. Now I know z is x minus mu, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, right? If I give you the z-score, can you solve for x? So 0.675 equals x minus the mean, which is 10.7, divided by the standard deviation, which is 1.6. So what are you going to do? You're going to multiply both sides by 1.6. And then add 10.7 to both sides. Whoops, I wanted to change the color, but this is just the algebra, you get the idea. And when you plug that into your calculator, uh, 1.6 times 0 0.675 plus 10.7, you get 11.78. So x equals 11.78 inches. So this is the length of the wand in the top 25%. Okay. And you can do the same thing for the bottom 25%. Whoops. Instead of using 0.75 as the area, we're going to use 0.25 as the area. So 0.25 is roughly up here. Uh, it's between these two numbers, and that is negative 0.675 because it's between 0.67 and 0.68. Oops. So if the area is 25%, then the z-score is negative 0.675. Remember, it's a symmetric distribution, so we get the same number. One is positive, one is negative, and... Um, Again, you can use the formula, negative 0.675, just put in a negative here, equals the mean, uh, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Once you do that, you get x equals 9.62 inches. Okay. 
So that's using the tables on the z-scores. Method two is using the calculator. If I'm giving you the area and I want you to find the score or find the length, then you want to use the inverse norm function. So let's look at the top 25%. Remember, top 25% means bottom 75%, so I always have to put the area to the left, comma the mean, comma the standard deviation. So once you do that, your second vars, inverse norm, mean, standard dv, comma mean, comma, standard deviation, and you get 11.78 like we got here. For the second one, you would do inverse, so this is the um, bottom 25%. You would do inverse norm. Area to the left is 25%. Don't forget to put it in decimal form. Mean standard deviation. Once you do that, second, let me just do second enter. And that'll re-put what I just had before. I just want to change the 0.75 to a 0.25 and I get 9.62 which is what I had before Okay. so if you like using the tables that's fine um, if you like using the calculator that's fine just remember to show your work either way Okay. So let's keep going. The shortest wand is belonging to this woman whose wand was 8.7 inches. If one wand is randomly selected, find the probability that it is longer than her wand. So we want to know the probability that a single wand is greater than 8.75 inches. So for that, again, I'm going to use inverse norm. I'm sorry. I'm going to, um, give, I've given the length, so I need to find the area. So I want to use the norm CDF. What's the mean? Uh, so the lower limit is 8.75. So let me draw my little picture. So 8.75 is here. And I want to know what's the probability that her wand is longer, or the A wand is longer than that, taller than that, right? So you do 8.75 as a lower limit. Upper limit is any big number, so let's pick 100 here. 100, a wand that's 100 inches tall is kind of ridiculous, so we want to choose something way out there. Comma mean, comma standard deviation. So let's plug this in. So I want second wars, norm CDF, and I already forgot what was it, 8.75. comma 100 comma 10.7 and we get 88 point roughly 88.9 percent So 88.9% of wands are, t are bigger than 8.75 inches. Just check that real quick. Yeah. Okay. If a wand is randomly selected, what is the probability that it is shorter than 10.7 inches and longer than 10.7 inches? the probability that a wand is less than 10.7 inches well if you just blindly do this problem without thinking about it which is fine I mean for this part shorter than 10.7 so I want from 0 to 10.7 mean and standard deviation plug that in let me do second bars two. Oops. Comma ten point seven, comma one point six. 
and you get 0 0.5, 50 percent. Well, that makes sense, right? Because think about the think about the picture. What's in the center? 10.7. So for a normal distribution, which is symmetric, the mean is the median. The median is 50th percentile, so 50 percent of the data will be above. 50% of the data will be below. So what is the probability that a wand is longer than her wand, and I mean longer than 10.7 and shorter than 10.7? 50% for both. 50 above and 50 below. Alright, now what wands are considered? Outliers. Well, think about what an outlier is. Hmm. Now, don't confuse outliers with unusual, okay? An outlier is any wand that's taller or bigger than uh, Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Do you guys remember this? Or less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Q3 is the 75th percentile and Q1 is the 25th percentile. We've actually already calculated that. If you look above here at the top problem that we did C, right? Top 25% means bottom 75%. That's our Q3. And bottom 25% is Q1. So 9.62 and 11.78. And if I subtract them, Q3 minus Q1 gives me the interquartile range. So when you subtract these two, you get 2.16. All right, so I got 2.16 as the interquartile range, and now I can plug it into this formula. Q3 is 11.78 plus 1.5 times 2.16 and then 9.62 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So when you do this, let me just uh, take a minute and do the calculation. So if you have a calculator, you can work with me and check it. And I get 15.02. And so when you do the subtraction, you get 6.38, and when you do the addition, you get 15.02. So any wand, so let's write any wand outside this range is an outlier. Any wand shorter than 6.38 inches or taller than 15.02 inches is an outlier. Okay. So I hope this showed you some applications of the normal distribution. Now, this is a made-up application, obviously, but I just wanted to illustrate using a fun example. Um, so if you have any questions, please send me an email or give me a call. Okay, thanks for watching.